Welcome to Psychos and Sociopaths. Today we're going to take a, a little bit beaten path. We're not going to talk about a serial killer, but we are going to talk about how to not get caught with a serial killer and uh, different tricks of our trade. Uh, this is me coming from a correction officer, not military personnel, but and uh, diving in and talking to uh, law enforcement and uh, uh, spec ops and infantry, and you just infantry and whatever else you want to divvy in on that one. Yeah. But uh, basically what we're going to do is if you're – and the likelihood of you actually being in this situation, it's very, very, very low. But the uh, but it's also depending on where you're at. Like right. if we were in like South Chicago, yeah, you would use this shit. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and and it's more or less for people that are traveling because we actually have. Uh, I know one person. Well, actually two now that actually does a lot of traveling and everything. Mm -hmm. And one's for my work, and one's a uh, friend of yours. Uh, a lot of traveling, mm -hmm. and this is just uh, basically. Uh, a shout out to the uh, travelers that keep us uh, uh, our country a little bit going and uh, go out of uh, other way and yeah, and, you know, transporting goods, uh, services, things like that to yeah. and fro. Yeah, but uh, you know, we we were talking about you know what what angle we were going to take with this episode, and, and and you're right. We we talk about all these serial murders. We talk about all these narcissists we talk about all these you know demented individuals who who get off on on doing unspeakable things to other human beings and but we never take the time to really kind of identify warning signs i mean yeah. we we've talked about talked about it a little bit as far as you know what kind of personalities these people have you know, but we never really talked about what what to look for, what not to look for, and you know, and the one thing that that really that you know, we identified this early on in this series was the narcissist, you know, just just the narcissistic nature of these individuals. You know, they'll 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 pick a target, and you know they will. You know, they, they, they'll, they'll sell themselves as being the greatest thing since sliced bread, and and then as soon as things start to go south, as soon as they feel like they're about to get caught, they turn the tables on their target, make the target the you know the aggressor, and then they come out looking like the victim. And and in a lot of times, and almost a hundred percent of the time, with the exception of the few victims that escaped uh, from the people that we've profiled. Uh, and this is coming from people that are just, uh, I, I want to say just idiots to the actual people that actually do the profile stuff. And we're just picking up on this as, you know, the stuff that we just noticed. Yeah. Because I, I, I don't know what it is, but I pick up patterns. Right. Fast. You know, and it's like, okay, so, you know, for example, and you, you just say you get somebody that comes in and, I don't know, I'm just throwing a scenario out here, but, uh, but just say somebody that comes in. And they initiate an affair with somebody. You know, the, this, this person comes in from outside of the relationship and they initiate an affair with one person or the other, whether it be the male or the female. And everything would seem to be just great, you know, until you get that level of comfort. And then they start to impose their, their controlling habits. You know, they, they make people feel like trash. Um, they get them to do things that they wouldn't otherwise normally do. They get them to turn their backs on family they get, and friends. They also get jealous. They get insanely jealous. Yeah, I've, I've also noticed this, in, and I, I tried to tell this to a friend of mine, that uh, his uh, wife, yeah, it was his wife at the time, uh, his wife was getting extremely jealous of just me and him hanging out. Mm -hmm. And I was like, uh, dude, she's cheating on you. I was like, no, 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 she would never do that. I was like, no. I already see the signs. Mm -hmm. She's cheating on you. 
Yeah. Because people that actually cheat get uh, jealous of the other person hanging out with anybody else. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you'll see that. And and then with, with the person that's getting jealous, in, in those cases, I don't think it's necessarily jealousy because jealousy kind of lends itself to the idea that there's some sincere feeling there. A lot of times these narcissists will hang on to these people because they're either agreeable, they're easy, and more times than not, it's, it's because they're easily manipulated. Yeah. And, you know, whenever they start hanging out with other people that are strong-willed or maybe just a little bit smarter, you know, or have that, that effervescent, you know, personality that hasn't been beaten into the ground yet. Yeah. The, the, the person that, that gets jealous, quote-unquote, will will sell it as jealousy and then badmouth that other person into the ground. You know, I've seen it in my personal life where it's happened, where, you know, and, and I've seen it where, you know, with people that I've, you know, that I've had involvements with where they get involved with somebody and as soon as they start to exhibit any kind of signs of independence or little flickers of the personality that they used to have, when their affair started, the person that, that gets jealous just automatically, boom, just starts coming down like a hammer. And a lot of times it'll result in uh, like physical damage to property, uh, like say, you know, punching holes in the drywall or breaking personal belongings, um, or, or even physical violence towards the other, you know, towards the other party. And if the other person's got kids, you know, then the kids are either witness to it or the kids become victims themselves. And a lot of a lot of the times it's a lot worse on the kids. It I is. I mean it's it, it's like 100 times worse. Absolutely 100 times worse <clears throat> because, you know, they they start to exhibit, you know, they they start to get angry and they start to feel, you know, because the kids they feel like they're being pushed out. And uh you know, like for me, you know, if, how can I put this without, if for me, like say for example, if, if my kids were in any kind of danger, you know, I would go out of my way to make sure that they get removed from that environment. And it's not to say, it's not a slight against, you know, the other party by any stretch of the imagination. That's not what I'm trying to say, because I'm not trying to get myself, you, or this whole show you know, sideways, but it, it's, you know, the, the kids, they're, they're the innocent bystanders and all of that. And the, a lot of times they end up becoming the victims. And if it's gone unchecked, those kids end up repeating that same kind of behavior that they, that they, exactly. that they were exposed to because whether it be the mother or the father that's involved in that type of relationship, they, normalize it like oh it's okay he or she's getting better they're a better person now they don't get angry um you know it, it, it it's really i don't know it's 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 a sad narrative because you what you see people that are codependent really fall victim to that a lot um and they may not realize it at first. Then they start to realize, oh well, this is a, this is a toxic environment. This is a toxic relationship. And then they make make steps to remove themselves from that by eliminating that variable. And they should, but they need to stay committed to that cause. Um, you know. So I mean, it's it's. Uh, I mean, that's a that's a hard subject to talk about. It really is. Yes, yeah, so especially between both of us because we've. We've both had those situations in our lives. Yeah. And we could, and we didn't, we don't want to get, we'll go, you know what, we'll do a what the hell episode on that. I, I, I like skim the surface on one of the episodes, but I want to relive that too, especially with a different person, different view. Mm -hmm. But uh, a lot of stuff, we'll get back on topic now. <laughs> We go, we go after our exes, we'll go full on Spartan. Yeah, see, that's yeah, just the thing. I, I, I kind of want to, I, I want to be able to, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? I want to avoid. Lawsuits? Yeah. 
I want to avoid giving the opportunity for any any individuals to assume that personality of King Leonidas and you know attempt to do that drop kick into that never ending hole because if anybody's going to scream this is Sparta it's going to be me. You know, oh yeah. One, I've got the beard to do it. Two, I don't know if you can get your leg up that high though. Oh, I can. I'll do it on camera. I don't care. <laughs> You know, I can. I'll do it on camera. I can kick this light out if I wanted to. But, uh, you know, I, I, I probably could get my heel just a little bit above that shelf right there. But uh, I could probably, too. It's been a while, though. I, I think I did it once, and my dumbass was wearing uh, uh, Wranglers at the time. <laughs> and uh, have you ever seen an egg get pressed by a, like a hydraulic press that's basically what happened i went down to the ground fast yeah i you know i know it's funny because it, it <laughs> we're gonna jump for just a second yeah but um that subject matter came up believe it or not this past weekend when i was visiting my girlfriend um we were we were sitting out and i think it was her sister that was out there with us or maybe been maybe been some of her cousins i can't remember which but um Talking about, uh, we'll just call them no-no square injuries, right? It yeah. was funny because it was like, uh, hold on a second here. Oh, see already, Xander Bogart scores in the top of the second. Red Sox now lead the Yankees one to nothing. Um, anyway, so the universe, at least in the means for them for them for the meantime, is still in balance for me. But anyways, I digress. Um, so. We were talking about it, and I was like, oh, well, yeah, you know, it, it, they were talking about wedgies front and back, and I'm like, oh, no, you have not experienced true pain until you accidentally sit on one of your balls. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. They're, like, they're, especially they're, when you get into a car, like you're climbing into the seat, and then you just got, ooh, all of a sudden. Or you just, you're wearing t uh, too tight of pants, or the pants are loose, but. They bind you, up? They bind up on that yeah. one side, mm -hmm. and you just basically. <laughs> it's, it literally looks so horrific because you're just standing the next moment and you turn just away and you're like, oh, God, and you just fall. Now, shout out to 511 Tactical, man, because I'm telling you, I'm wearing a pair of their pants now. I'm, it, hands down, probably one of my favorite pairs of pants because I have not had that issue at all while I'm wearing these pants. And I think it's just because of the construction of the pants. I want those freaking uh, Chuck Norris pants. You ever seen those? No. Now you got me wanting to lift them up. They're, uh... Damn you. They have, like, uh, spandex or something in between the, th uh, in between the, uh, the midsection. Uh -huh. So you can do high kicks and everything. It, I think it was back in the 70s or early 80s. And they're Wranglers to boot. Oh, yeah. Wow, okay. All right, see, no, and the 511 Tactical's got blue jeans. Really? Yeah. Send me the link. They are $75 a pair. Don't send me the link. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, so, yeah, I mean, it was funny that you brought that up because I was like, oh, wait a minute, and then it just took me back to last weekend, so. Yeah. yeah. You know you know what's sad? And a lot of people that are actually listening to this, the, the few viewers that we have, uh, they'll listen to these shows and everything. It's like, when are they going to get back on topic? And I was like, mm. Because I, that's, I got, not our, that's not our thing. Well, it's no one's thing. Every podcast that I listen to, mm -hmm. they stay on topic a little bit. Even on Free and Range America, whenever you got your name mentioned during the podcast, I mean, they just went wildly off track. I mean, they started talking about renting out a broom closet to a 17-year-old who had no experience at all, but she was willing to learn, and she's like, go get her. And they're like, we're going to put you in the maybe pile. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, huh, wow, that, that spiraled way, way out, off, way out of control. And I'm like, suddenly don't feel quite so bad. Because yeah, I, I have to listen to they've, those. They've got, they've got the shell casing resin, rosin table, or not resin, or rosin, but resin table. There's a difference between resin and rosin. Thank you very much for coming to my TED Talk. But, um... You know, they've got all this high production value. They've got really great mics. They've got cool cameras. They've got editors. They've got graphics people. And they're monetized. <laughs> so That's because they own their own company. And I'm sitting here going, 
Huh. Okay. Oh, speaking of which, um, <clears throat> you know what we probably should do is, is get a hold of Anchor and uh, see if like we can get like a like a code, like a discount code. We already get uh, from, from you know like for for our listeners that if you want to start your own podcast, go. No, to... it's that's free. Oh, is it? Okay. Well, and, and I I do the the intro. Yeah. That that intro is our monetization. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, we have two dollars now. We have two dollars. Look we, at that. Uh, you want a dollar? You know what? I don't want to spend it all in one place. So let's <laughs> reinvest that back into the show. But and, uh, that, and that's compound interest of uh, almost two years of people not listening but listening. And I found out people are going like deep down in our podcast because uh, Mike uh, Kurtz, he was telling me, he was like, "Yeah, dude, I really like that farmer." That farmer guy. I was like, farmer guy. What the fuck are you talking about? And he's like, oh, he was on one of your sh- uh, episodes. Oh, you mean Steve Bags? Yeah, we did an episode because uh, I want to learn more about ranching, and because I'd only I only did like two weeks of ranching, and that was because I was in the military. And it's, but I was like, yeah, he's a really great guy. You should check out that episode. It was actually pretty interesting. Yeah, I, I got a call from Maria the other day, uh-huh. and she's like. It actually was yesterday. She goes, when are you doing more episodes? I'm like, well, I'm going to the studio today. Why? She goes, because I'm out of new stuff. I'm doing reruns now. <laughs> love you, Maria. I, 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 I Honestly, I love that woman. <laughs> you know, so I'm she, she, messaged, she messaged me. Well, you could, uh, she messaged the uh, Facebook page. Yeah. That anybody can message it. We'll talk to you. Oh, yeah. As long as it's nothing like crazy and you don't send dick pics. And make sure it's a good dick if you do. I'm not. I'm, I'm talking. I'm, I'm. So warning signs. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, warning signs. Yeah. So um, I can get us back on topic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot of warning signs, though. Uh, getting back on topic of how to uh, stuttering. You'd be surprised, a person that actually stutters a lot. Like me, I do actually have a stuttering problem. Okay, so I should be walking, watching for warning signs about you. Yeah, but <laughs> if they don't have a stuttering problem for a long period of time, and then they start having a stuttering problem when they're talking. What? Christian Arroyo just hit a two-run home run. It's 3, three nothing Red Sox right now. We do that on fucking Mondays. Well, I'm sorry, dude. It's Red Sox Yankees weekend, and I've got the game up. So yeah, go ahead. I'm 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 actively participating in this conversation. By the way, I'm just saying. I feel abandoned. Already. Abandoned? Yes. Dude, I don't have abandonment issues, but you're giving me abandonment issues. Think about how my ex-wife felt. Okay, and this is the only time that I'm going to mention her on the show is the fact that for six months out of the year, she 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 proclaimed herself. She identified as a Red Sox widow. The dulcet tones of Joe Clastiglione became an unofficial member of our family during six months out of the year. The games, I mean, mostly being played on the West Co- or East Coast, would start at six o'clock, and we would have Joe playing in the background while we were at the dinner table. And what for, is that in like nerd speak? Okay, because so Joe, Joe nerd... Clastiglione is the play-by-play guy for the Red Sox radio network, and he's been calling games for the Red Sox since like '86. He has called more games for the Red Sox than any other man in history. You know, like the Rangers have Eric Nadal. Okay, it's like Kevin yeah. Smith talking about Marvel movies. No, because he does it a lot. Just because he does it a lot. No, I mean, this is an honest-to-God play-by-play. Anyways, digressing. Let's move on. Sorry. So, stuttering. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. A lot of people actually, uh, if you're talking to a person and everything like that, and they start to stutter, it's more likely they're lying. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Another another couple of tricks, and I I got this from... uh, Bear talk? No. Big tree? Damn it. I know that there's one sign, too, that you can look at. If the person looks up and to the right, they're creating a lie because they're accessing that, that portion of the brain. Whereas if they look up and to the left, 
they're accessing their memories when they're trying to tell you a story. God, I look at them like, why? I really do. Yeah, I so if you look up act... and to the left, or is it the other way around? No, if they look up and to the left, they're accessing the creative portions of their brain versus up and to the right, they're accessing the memory portion of their brain. Um, God, I can't rem remember this guy's podcast, uh, YouTube channel. Uh, fuck. He's at... He's one of those people, though. He, he's an ex-Navy SEAL. Mm -hmm. Not not to give you any kind of hops of what he says and everything like that. But he's an ex-Navy SEAL. And he he's like me to the point where I'm a minimalist. I don't like to carry a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. even though I carry... Uh, unlike my dad, who carries, like, a ball and chain just in case. Yeah. But he was saying uh, a lot of stuff that you would want to carry on you uh, get something that says Rolex on it. It doesn't have to, like, be an actual Rolex. He's like, the only reason why I have a Rolex on me at all times is not because I'm trying to be fancy, but people know the name Rolex. So if you want to get out, uh, get out of the situation, give them the watch, they already think, hey, it's a Rolex. And he's like, I've, I've probably had to drop Rolex, like, several hundred times that I've started buying Folexes instead of a Rolex because it's it's just a name. They're actually, you're giving them a name product that goes in the significant of, hey, I have money now. And, you and, know, that's a good idea. Yeah. It, I, had a, I had a Folex for a while, and uh, I've never used it like that, but after he said that, I was like, that makes fucking perfect sense. Yeah, that does. That, that makes that makes a lot of sense. And always work. carry like uh, an extra wallet with at least eighty dollars in it. So if they want to steal your wallet and everything, they hang your wallet. You give them the wallet and you show them that it has 80, uh, some cash in it. He said sixty to eighty, just to give it that kind of girth. Uh, not girth, but the idea that there's a lot of money in there. Mm -hmm. And you hand them that, and they run off. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay, yeah, all right. I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down. <clears throat> but it, a lot of getting away from people like that because of uh, it's more or less perception. Yeah. And another way to do it, and this might sound strange, is be more uh, complacent to them. Yeah, because, I mean, it's in those moments, I mean... It, you get a lot of these blowhards, a lot of these bro vets that are out there. They'll they'll proclaim to have the Superman complex. Did I ever tell you who who made that up? Mm mm. Bro vets. Yeah. Mm mm. Angry cop and JT. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I was wondering about that because like you hear people like John Burke use that term, and it's not it's not a good term at all. I mean, you get these guys that are like. I mean, they'd be the first person to call somebody out for being a boot. Well, they wanted to, be, okay, you they know, were or tired. Or they'd be like, I'm a veteran, get away from me. And it's like, look, dude, I get it. Like, a good percentage of the population is now veterans. Don't, don't, some, don't some be Some of them are not even real veterans. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, you get those stolen valor cocksuckers out there. But Yeah. Um, <laughs> there was that meme out there. This dude had... Uh, he had five stars on his collar lapel, on his on his shoulder lapels, and a specialist rank sewn onto the sleeve. It's like a five I've star general that. specialist is watching you. You know, it's like, hold up, everybody. This dude needs to say, put some pussy for the rest of us, right? Yeah. It's like, holy oh, dude. You know, and, and slightly off again. If you're gonna steal valor, do your fucking homework. Oh my god. If, you, if you're going to sit there... Funny story. If, if you're going to sit there and be like, oh, yeah, well, Special Forces, know what the fucking MOS is. No, even Jack Mettleville has the lead on that. And he, he says he does it. Jack Mettleville... You know who Jack Mettleville is? Yeah, yeah. Right? Okay. Well, when we went down, uh, that was the only person that we saw down there when we went to the Black Rifle Coffee uh, coffee shop down in Fort Worth. Yeah. Which is just visit. Very nice. And they also sell, uh, sell like... Uh, uh, field crafts, uh, survival gear. Mm -hmm. Just putting it out there, Evan. If you ever listen to us, I miss you. 
And, <laughs> and, uh, he does. It's an unhealthy obsession. It really is. It's like, I, I just love short people. Yeah, well, you know, me, I'm, I'm more of a the bearded type. So, Matt, if you're listening, call me. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but he, he, uh, a red horse, uh, crew gave him a red horse hat. Mm-hmm. And so, and red horse is civil engineering for the air force. Right. It, it's, it's like special teams. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyways, he, he went around, he learned all the duty stations that red horses were at all the kinds of stuff. He was telling my dad this. He was like, yeah, I, I, I had to do all this stuff. And he's like, wait a minute. But were you a veteran? And he's like, oh, yeah, I was in the Marine Corps. I was in the infantry. But I was a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> but he, it, he, oh, man, I love Jack Manerville. But uh, another thing, back on topic, we, sh- we should do every time we get back on topic, say back on topic, so if they can uh, scroll over, it's like, oh, they're just talking some bullshit. No, but because I, I, I want them to a... suffer through this. I do. And I, suffering is the applicable term here, and it's the correct one. I'm not misspe- or misspeaking here at all. I, they will suffer through the bullshit because this, this is the production value that you get for a free podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> You take it and you like it. You know, I mean... At some point, we're going to get some. We're going to be able to pay the royalties to get that soundbite of the judge from Caddyshack. You'll get nothing and like it, you know. <laughs> I think you can use that. Yeah, you might be. We might be able to. So we might can be find that. To, yeah, we might. I, I'll. I'll. Uh, start. We'll get a soundboard and be like, I think you'll get nothing and like it. Yeah, yeah that's right. But uh, <clears throat> deception, deception, uh, and and we'll get into the fighting part uh, later, but. Uh, deception, uh, deception, misdirection, and feeling empathy for the other person. Yeah, see, true narcissists don't feel empathy, though. Well, it's like one of those things that uh, it's a disingenuous empathy. So, no, yeah, I get that. It's more or less like uh, going out. It's like, oh man, who hurt you? Are you? Are no, okay? okay, so that that's them trying to rush in and be that knight in shining armor. But hunt, girls, specifically, let me tell you something. Knights in shining armor, beware, because they're like baseball players without dirt on their uniforms. If they're if there's if their armor is still shiny, or if their uniforms don't have dirt on them, that means they didn't fucking do anything. They've been sitting on the bench, playing the part of the cheerleader. Or in the case of the shining knight, he sat back and let his pages do the dirty work for him. So don't don't trust anybody that doesn't have a few dings and dents, because I tell you what, it, it's 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 people like you and I, where you know we've got dents, we've got gouges in our armor, and, and they're scuffed up. But you know what? Those are those are those are those are battle scars. I mean, those are things. Those are lessons that we've had to learn the hard way, and those are lessons that we've learned from. And, and we can apply that through practical application in our life to be be a better person. You know, so so for those of us who have been run around on, been lied about, and things of that nature, you know, we we don't we don't tend to get <clears throat> as outwardly you know outward or outward what's the word I'm looking for outwardly word wordly. I think that might be it. Outwardly, whatever. I can't speak English. We made sometimes. a new word. Yeah, a- outwardly, <coughs> yeah, that's what I'm looking for. You know, we, we, we don't project that anger because we, you know, we're able to manage that because it's it's something that we've kind of conditioned ourselves to. It's like, okay. How do you spell valor? Which word? Valor. Valor, V-A-L-O-R. V-A-L-O-R. Uh-huh. So, but, you know, it's... Uh, you know, you're going to get these people that are going to swoop in. They're going to be like, oh, I can't believe that you got treated this way. And they, they take advantage of you when you're having a, a very low psychological moment, when you're not feeling all that great about yourself. Um, they, they pick up on these things. I mean, a lot of times these people that, that, that victimize other individuals, 
I mean, they, they look for those, you know, for those people that are weak. They build them up. Vigilance elite, that's what it was. Sorry. Vigilance? Yeah, vigilance elite. Uh, God, what's, it, what's his... What's his name? Da, 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 da. Sean Ryan. Yeah, see, this is why I need a MacBook instead of being able to rely on my damn iPad all the time. So, for any of our listeners out there, if you have a MacBook Air or MacBook Pro that will run Big Sur, please, by all means, contact us. We'll provide you with a mailing address. And it'll be all, well, you know, we could, what, provide like a donation receipt? I don't know. Anyways, digressing. Go ahead. That, that was me. Well, actually, you could do that. That was me taking my shot to get a to, to get, get a MacBook. MacBook. Yeah. yeah. But Which uh, I gotta get, I gotta get him to talk to my brother about that. Uh, let's see if I can get him to do that. He says he don't have time moving and everything. I told him probably just wait until he gets to Alabama. I mean, it'd be a little bit more expensive, but you know, where there's the whole I can do the work too. You know, it's not the first time I've had to crack open a piece of electronics. Yeah, but a lot of the stuff that. And another thing is, is, and I will say this and repeat this throughout the whole thing if I have to, is, and it might sound as silly and until you're actually in that situation and everything like that, take a couple of seconds, breathe, and get your composure. And this sounds like it's going to suck, but know that you're probably going to die. Once you get that, that that out of your head, the fear from from the situation will go away and you'll be able to think more clearly and figure out a better way to get out of that. Well, it's situation. not so much that. I mean, but if you if you're in a struggle, like you're you're in a physical confrontation, just like anything else, crisis management, you take that deep breath and you slow everything down mentally. Yeah. Pitchers in baseball call it clearing the mechanism, and they do it before every pitch. So that way they can drown out the crowd noise and things of that nature. But assess your situation, okay? Because when you when you take the time to slow everything down, believe me, b- believe it or not, your situational awareness becomes incredibly heightened. Yeah. Because your flight or fight is kicking in like crazy at that point. So you're looking for points of egress. You're looking for ways to get out, get away. You're looking for obstacles that you could use to help aid you in, in gaining distance between you and your attacker. Um, and because I, I promise you this, you know, you, you get these people that are like, well, I'll just call 911. Well, that's all well and good, but if they're on top of you, you're not going to have a free hand to, to, to activate your emergency setting on your cell phone. Sorry. Unless you have happen. a Nokia, then you have a weapon right there. Yeah. If, if you got the, yeah. If you got the old school Nokia, <laughs> yeah. And you know, they, they attack you while you're playing your game of snake, then you just clock them upside the head. But you and know, probably just end up lives. <laughs> Especially if you hit them with that fake antenna. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> right? It's like, that's like a mini stiletto right if, there. If you, if, uh, if you're listening to us, it's basically me doing a stabbing motion in a person's neck. That thing will kill anything. But, I mean, the hardness of it just is, it's like vibranium. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. But, uh, you know, if, because ultimately, at the end of the day, we're going to be responsible for our own well-being because, let's face it, I mean, and I'm not disparaging the police at all. I mean, I support the police 100% because there are good cops out there, and then there's there's crappy cops. I mean, just like there's good soldiers and good Marines, bad soldiers and bad Marines, the same thing with airmen, sailors. I, I want to include, guard, you know, Coast Guardsmen, but anyways... Um, See what you did there, sir. Yeah, you know, I, I, what do we even call the Space Force people? Do we call us? We can't call them Space Force. Did you see the new thing? No. That uh, the Army is training the Space Marines? See, I'm waiting for them to open up that, that Space Shuttle Door Gunner MOS. I will re enlist. I don't care. How cool would that be? Anyways, you gotta imagine, though, would it be a mini <laughs> Right? You were like, we're going to be a pet. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, we've got to come back. we got to come back. You know? I, mean, <laughs> I, went to, I went to Space Gunner thing. You know, I mean, that's that's probably one of the few times that you could get away with being an absolute fobbit where you got every piece of gear known to man attached to you, and it's just simply due to the fact that 
you don't want your spacesuit getting ripped and depressurizing while you're wearing it. That just wouldn't be good, right? But, uh, <clears throat> you know, it, we're responsible for our own safety, ultimately. Uh, you and I are both huge, huge supporters of the Second Amendment. We, you know, among other things, we believe that all, all the rest of our uh, freedoms in this country are secured by the Second Amendment, exactly. which is why the left is so fervent about, you know, about getting rid of our gun rights. But, I mean, men and women alike, go out and get a concealed carry license. Be proficient with that weapon. You know, and then you have to take that take on that that personal responsibility of making sure that you know it's 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 kept safe. You know, I suggest getting those Kydex holsters where they you know they lock themselves in. You have to twist them to get out. You know, um, and get comfortable with it because you're responsible for your own safety. Because in situations where you let somebody in and they suck the life force out of you, they suck the money out of your account, they 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 just drain you of all your personal worth. As far as like self-esteem is concerned, those are the be those are the people. They they seemingly just it, to me, it just seems like they get away with it, because you got all these enabling people that that are around them. That that encourage that type of behavior, and it's usually because you know those types of shitheads run together, you know. But you know, I can think of a you know of a couple of people off the top of my head that you know here in town that fit that bill to a T. Yeah. They come in, they use, I mean, they use up the individuals that they get together with. And they're only out for themselves, you know. And and it's when they feel like they're being backed into a corner, then they turn feral and they start ripping stuff up. They start threatening. Um, you know, they'll start, you know, they'll start. Right about, we actually both dated the same person and ended up doing the same thing. Maybe, yeah. Oh, no, she, yeah, was, she oh, was like yeah. that. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm tracking. I'm tracking. Yeah, she was but, like that though. But with, you know, it, it's, it's just, it's kind of, you know, it's discouraging because you know you look at some of these. And, and to be completely honest, if we're talking about demographics and, and statistics, I mean, most of the people that 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 prey upon individuals are male. So I mean. There's a lot of females. There, there the are, thing. but you know, right. statistically speaking, at least you know here locally, at least. No, you hear mostly from you hear, the male male side. Yeah, because because guys it's are more aggressive like, and it makes more news because. Yeah, uh, and then everybody looks at the guy like, "Well, why didn't you do something?" About we it? don't. We don't hear uh, on the female side only because, oh. And it's usually because you know we only hear about hear about it if it's a woman, if it's people like Casey Anthony or. Arlene Warnos, you know, it's only after they've committed these atrocious, you know, these atrocious acts that we hear about the women. It's usually because at that point, their victim is dead. So, yeah. But don't be afraid to speak up. If 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 you feel like this person that is that you've brought into your life is exhibiting these signs, go with your gut and never think there is no way out. Yeah, and and if you're listening to this right now, give us a uh, message that you feel that you're you're entrapped. I'll show up. I don't care. Yeah, I mean, I have I have no morals when it comes to stuff like that. Well, you know, I mean, there's and this this goes with male or female. I exactly. So you know, it's it's you know, but we're not by any stretch of the imagination are we advocating the vigilante type attitude. No, I mean, we no, we, I would we, actually we'll, we'll provide the resources. But at the same time, if we need to, we will show up, you know. Sometimes, with, with, sometimes that's all you need. Yeah, sometimes that's all you need. I mean, just, just to, to, if anything else, just to be that, that, that moral support. But, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a situation where it's like, you know, well, yeah, we are personally responsible for our own safety. You know, sometimes, you know, just like with our veteran and law enforcement communities, you know, what, that, that are facing this, this suicide you know, epidemic, we just need to know somebody's there. And a mass exodus. Yeah. You know, and, and it's, like, it's like, okay. I almost hurt my brain off that big word. Exodus? Yeah. Yeah, spell that. Anyways. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I promise that uh, Mr. David Diggerman does hold a high school diploma. 
And uh, no, it's not a GED. I also hold a grudge, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm not scared of you. Um, <clears throat> then it doesn't help that my weapons are behind you. <laughs> oh, that's right, it is. Yeah, no, I'm really not scared of you. <laughs> You know? even, even my bow, if I wanted to go with my bow, my bow is over by you. The only thing I have is my knife, so I don't have anything that could actually... I could break these arrows in half and stab you with the carbon I, fiber. I, I know. I have nothing over here. <laughs> I mean, nothing you, I, I don't want to... You've got two pins, but I've got a boom mic over here, and uh, I've, I've, got an, I've got an iPad yeah. that has Apple Care on it. The only thing I have is the Espresso. Yeah, but really? I got the good one on my side. God damn it. <laughs> but uh, uh, talking about weapons and knowing your environment, that's another good uh, point off is... Uh, Unless you're going to marry this individual, I mean, and absolutely marry this individual, if you, you know, and if it's going to get to that point, vet the shit out of them. I mean, seriously. Get to know their family, oh, inside yeah. and out. And if, you know... I mean, you're going to expect that this individual is going to have a falling out with at least one or two members of the family, but if that number starts to rapidly approach 45 to 50 percent and goes over that threshold, run away as far as you possibly can, because there's there's always what is it three sides to every story his 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 side her side and the truth. One side, and, uh, well, p- pointing it out in in this way, you're you're absolutely right, but just it's one side. Uh, their your side, their side, and the truth. Yeah. So that they it, we're trying to be more gender fluid. We're getting our uh, oh, I don't ESG. Care. We're getting our we're trying to get our ESG. Then explain up. to me why Amazon on their web on their on their uh, website has a gender. Uh, there's more than two genders T-shirt, but on the cut it's male or female. You you explain that one to me. You're racist. That's what I. What racist? It is. Yes. That's no. What it is. How is that racist? Hey, that that's what all those. Oh, uh, Nazi. There we go. We'll just go with Nazi. I'm a scientific acknowledgist. No, no, Nazi. That, 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 all that big word that you try to put put out right there just spells Nazi to me. <laughs> okay. So at the risk of exposing myself here, oh. you're talking to a guy that graduated by the skin of his teeth. Because why? I thought, well, what do I need school for? I'm joining the army. Little did I know. That's why if we ever invent time time travel, I'm going to go back in time, kick myself in the ass, and be like, don't do A, B, and C, but do D, E, and F. Yeah, what's really strange is you're talking to a person that tried to get his doctorate. Yeah, it'd be a doctor and everything. And... It's scary to think how we could have turned out, right? Yeah, I mean, I have I have all this knowledge, uh, some of the knowledge and stuff like that. It's kind of scary me. If, once you get the like, you know me to a little point, and you understand it, and you accept it. But there, there's like, I was like, how does he come up with some of the stuff every once in a while? I was like, I heard it like, if if I had that limitless pill, I would be like, right. I, wh- why haven't they invented something like that? But combat. Combat, yeah. So. Now, on something like this, uh, what you got to uh, understand is you're not looking to overpower by strength. Mm-mm. Not at all. And this is <clears throat> this is both male and female. Okay? Yeah. If a female is fighting a female, their likelihood, uh, depending on weight class and stuff like that, I want you to understand you're a fight for your freaking life. Yeah. And center of gravity is your friend. Center of gravity, momentum, bite, claw. Any fight that you lose is a fair fight. So any time that I think that I would get into a fight, now obviously I'm going to try to diploma, you know, try to diplomatically get myself out of a fight because I don't I mean it's called verbal dirt, uh, jiu-jitsu. If I can talk my way out of a fight, great because well yeah you know you get that stereotypical caveman alpha male you know I'm just gonna bash your face in sometimes you you need that that therapeutic release of just beating somebody but 
<laughs> I say that like it's an everyday occurrence, but um, you know, it, it, it's what's the word I'm looking for here? I knew the other word. Physical violence should be the last resort. Now, obviously, there may be times where you're backed into a corner and you have no other recourse. Yeah. But to do that, if 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 you're fighting a guy whether you're another dude or if you're a woman, the first thing you should go for is the balls. Kick them square in the nuts as hard as you possibly can. And even if it's a glancing blow, sometimes those are the ones that hurt the most. You know, and then go for the eyes. Go for the eyes. Throw punch is always an option. Pull up the nose. Yeah, pull up the nose or just that palm strike to the to the nose. <sighs> Too well. well, no. If you if, if you grab okay, if you grab like you punch anybody in the nose, dude, their eyes are gonna water, and it's gonna give you a second or two to at least get some distance. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, and that's another thing. Don't stay to finish off the guy. No, don't. Get it to where you can run and run. Yeah, because especially with the way that the legal system in this country is rigged nowadays, is the fact that if even yeah. if you were the one that's being attacked, yeah. You will find somebody who will be out there to be like, well, instead of incapacitating oh, you'll their, still have their the attacker, you know, they, they stayed to finish it off. And it's like, at that point, they don't consider it self-defense anymore. They consider it uh, manslaughter. Yeah, because you have people out there, oh, he tried to rob me and he, he pulled a gun on me, so I shot him. Uh, your life is more, uh, more uh, better than his, so you had to end his. Yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like somebody breaks into my home. I will announce to them that I am armed, and they've got X amount of seconds to unask my AO before they start catching some hate, either in 5.56 or 9 millimeter. That's all there is to it. And I just got a new... Uh, a new. Um, Did you finally get a new scope? I didn't get a scope for my AR yet, but I got a new light for my, for my Glock, and it's got the... It, it goes from a steady light to a strobe, and then it's got the, uh, the green laser on the other side, so there's two buttons on it. I need to start investing in a light and a, mag, uh, and a holster for, the, uh, for a light, only because my eyesight's starting to lean a little bit downwards. Now. Well, I'll shoot you the link for that. For, for the, I, for you the, don't have for, to. No, I'll shoot you. No, no my, my dad probably has a light for my guns. Well, I'm just telling you, I'm going to show you the one that I've got, but anyways. Okay. But, uh, it's one of those things is it, I can scratch around over my dad's house and mm -hmm. he'll just like, oh, yeah, I got this over here. And uh, here you go. Well, hey, if you find a sight mark, a uh, reflex, uh, uh, you know, reflex red dot for me, that would be great. Save me about 150 bucks. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so. Technically, I got, I got one. I just needed the batteries for it. And you didn't see that red dot that I had on, no, that, I didn't. on that 22. No, no, I didn't. See, no, 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 no. You got the, you got, they're rated for different calibers because I don't want to put one on my AR only to have have the zero knocked off every time I pull the trigger. No, so it's it's stout. Oh God, really? Jeez. He does competitions. Hmm. Anyways, we got wildly off track again. We did get wildly off track, but. We, <clears throat> at one point in time, we gave some good information. <laughs> hey, remember I remember we were talking about HOAs before we came in here this, uh, today? Oh, God, yes. The episode 145 of Free Range American. I've already watched. The, they're talking about it, homeowners yeah. associations. It was freaking hilarious. Oh, yeah, I just got the notification for it, so yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen to that later tonight. It was hilarious. But in any given, uh, given, given situation like that, now, don't call us if you think that, you know, someone's a serial killer and everything. Call the cops. Yeah. First and foremost, your first first call needs to be to the police. I mean, if somebody's doing something illegal in your home or doing something, you know, damaging to your, pro you know, to your property, the, the authorities need to be the one to handle that. No, when we, when we extended that, uh, that invitation, uh, you know, for assistance from us. We will call the cops and yeah. have them there. We'll have the cops there <coughs> with us. But we will be there to help you. We're not. We're not going to be there as an aggressor. We're not a quick. We're not a quick reactionary force. Yeah. We're not there to, to, to serve as your own personal SWAT team. That's yeah. that's not what we're saying. 
we, we are there to help get you out of a bad situation or we are there to help sit down with you and listen to you vent because we would rather listen to somebody vent about their problems and listen to them vent about their life then go to a memorial service. Yeah, I mean, hands down, 100%. You know, that, that's, that's first and foremost. I mean, that's the way that I am when, we, when, when, when I work with veterans. That's the way that we need to be with everybody else. Yeah. So, but, you know, if, if you find yourself in, in one of these situations where you feel like you're trapped, not, not necessarily physically, but like emotionally trapped or, or mentally trapped, because somebody is talking, you know, somebody's just verbally and in some cases even physically beating you down or emotionally beating you down, that that's abuse. Yeah. 100%. And you've got these people out there that live and live in this world that that's all they do. That is I mean that's what they get off on because while they're sleeping with you, they're sleeping with three or four other people. And, and, you know, they, they or always... Or killing three other people. That was the whole thing was the killing three right. other people. You know, they, usually you the people... going back to the chief, you, Usually, usually yeah. the people that, that you know, that, 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 you know, are the aggressors, you know, at night, look for the little things like, how do they put their cell phones down? If they put their cell phones screened down, they're hiding something. I only do that because I don't want any kind of messages or anything. I always put it down. Well, not because no, I'm talking about like if you're in a, if you're in a relationship with somebody, yeah, and you you've invited them into your bedroom, and this person is putting their cell phone screen side or, down, and it, you know, <coughs> it, it, no, I mean because they'll they'll try to play it off like, well, I put my phone on silent because it goes off all night long because I've got all these other notifications, or they'll put the screen down because they're like, oh well, it's too bright and it keeps going off. Well, you know what? Put your phone into sleep mode. Or do not disturb because yeah. phone calls can get through, but all the other notifications will be silent until the next day. And if if they get really defensive of you going for their phone, yeah. Like I mean, if I go, hey Johnny, I'm gonna let me check your phone real quick. Okay. Yeah. And and here, they, let what, me you, what are you doing? For you. What are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? You know, let me unlock it for you. You know, let me hand you know hand it to you. You know, and I mean, and, if you do that with my phone, you're taking your own chances with your own sanity. But but safe to say, you and I are not in a relationship. So, um, you know, and Mindy, Mindy will attest to it. You, you're you're kind of not my type. So there's that. You say that now. No, I'm confident of, enough in my heterosexuality. A couple of shots of tequila. We might have to change that. No, sir. <laughs> See, statements like that make me not want to party with you. Um, <laughs> you know, but you know, it you, we get. We, we find ourselves in these, in these you know, seeing these stories uh, or we see these situations pop up in real and life. And even when we actually talk about it, we go, you know, but this could have been prevented. There's certain situations that can't be prevented, not at all. Yeah. But there's certain situations that can be prevented. Like even if, you're, if you know you're going, uh, if there's like reports mm-hmm. in the news, like, hey, this person's been... Uh, there's been killings in such and in, in not to dog our city, but if there's, you know, robberies in uh, Lucy Park, and you decide to go to Lucy Park, go with a couple of friends. Yeah, go with a couple of friends. Take a knife at least. You know? Yeah. But pepper it, spray. Pepper spray. Have something on you exactly. that can do some damage. A monkey's you know. paw. With, um, and I'll describe this in monkey paw to the pe- uh, viewers that don't know. All it is is. A ball bearing wrapped in uh, what, Maya and Zipcor? Oh, um, yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. And that's all it is, and it <laughs> freaking does some damage. Yeah, so I mean, but, you know, you, you we have to look at, you know, we have to look out for ourselves. Yeah. I mean, surround yourself with the right kinds of people. If, if you find yourself surrounded by people that are enabling these destructive behaviors that were, you know, you find yourself, you know, inviting these types of, of, of destructive individuals, these toxic individuals. I, and I love the word toxic. I, I do because as far as like a descriptive term, because there's really no other way to describe these individuals, whether it be a parent, a boyfriend or a girlfriend, a husband or a wife, you know, um, 
our family member, extended or otherwise, or oh, even there, if it's no, just there, a there's friend. A new, there's a new term. Hold on. I'll <clears> try. <throat> Let me think of it. What was it? Shit hose? I think it was a shit hose. Shit hose or a shit heel? No, a shit hose. I heard it. I heard it today on uh, Clear It Hot, and and Andy freaking was like, "I'm using that shit hose." Yeah. Shit hose. Okay. Well, you get these these shit hose individuals or toxic for those who are not in the know. I want to bring that back into our little community. Community. That's that's. that's <laughs> I'm going to use that a lot. He's a fucking shit hose. But you, if you you know you you're going to find these individuals out there. I mean, they're going to look for you. They're going to look at and they're going to see. Initially, they're going to look at you like, oh, this is a challenge. And once they feel like they've got a foot in the door, they, they, will, they will sell themselves as being the, the best thing in the world. And, and all they want to do is just make you happy. And they want to do this. And they want to do that. Fuck. You know. I did it again. What did you do? No, the whole, the, the way you're describing, it just, just sounds like someone that wanted to date me a little bit I'm right like, but oh fuck I did it you know and it's an old school <clears throat> term and I, I think it's really applicable it's it's snake oil salesman yeah you know snake oil salesman frauds um, it, it, narcissist I mean that is the go to because that's exactly what they are because it's never their fault it's never their fault yeah you know, and these are the same types of people that they're out having numerous relationships at the same time that they're in one with you. And if you refuse to call them out on it, I don't want to say, I don't want to throw these victims under the bus, but I like sometimes, man, it's like some of these victims, they bring that crap on themselves. And I, and I say that in the context of they know that that behavior is taking place. They make excuses for it. And then they just keep inviting it back. I all I always wonder when I'm like looking at uh, doing the research and everything, if that person's like, I found the severed head, but it, it just didn't connect. I'm like, what? I cannot stand those individuals, both male and female, that are like, I can fix them. It's not your fucking job to fix this other individual. That was their parents' responsibility, and their parents failed miserably. It is not your fault that that is a load that they should have swallowed, but it is your fault if you allow that to keep coming into your life after they've knocked you around a couple of times. You know, I mean, I, one is too many times. Once is too many times. If they, they put their hands on you, get them out. Yeah. Okay? Because, especially for men, if you put your hands on a woman to make yourself feel more dominant and get yourself more established into that position of control... I'm sorry, that's some baby dick energy that you're projecting right there. That's like dudes that drive around in big jacked up trucks, low profile tires while they're sucking their, their buddies off the Florida Georgia line. Okay, sorry. It's some baby dick energy and they need to go take that shit somewhere else. I'm so proud of you actually pulled that off. It sounded like you're about to stutter and, and go into the hole, but you kept it going and you made it through that whole uh, Georgia line thing. Hey, I'm telling you, man. It's, you're, you're, you're getting better. It's, 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 it's all about that conviction, right? Yeah. But, um, you know, it, it's... seeing there's the stutter. Yeah. But we have, the, we have these people out there. <clears throat> That's all that they want. I mean, they, they, they step on their dick parenthetically or sometimes figuratively. Well, figur figuratively and parenthetically, it means the same thing, people. Um, but... Well, if you're a three-foot midget, you can actually do it. But the ratio still needs to work out. Anyways, digress. <laughs> okay, see, I don't know, for whatever reason, dude, you had me thinking of this well-hung fucking midget walking around with a tiki torch going, oh, you're in the land of the little people now. Holla, 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 the yellow road. You know, but... It, <laughs> God. So... <laughs> I can think of a couple of our viewers. If they're listening to this driving down the road, they 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 are having to hold the steering wheel straight so they don't swerve into the shoulder. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, the Kool Aid Man. Oh yeah, sorry. God, where did that come from? Thank you. I Seth have Mc no idea. That, dude. That, that one right there is Seth MacFarlane's fault. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know. 
<laughs> God. Anyway, well, let's let's wrap this one. So up. yeah, I mean, you, you find I mean these these people that are they're 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 out there, and it's just like that's all they they get off on the idea that they can step on their dick, they can completely screw the pooch. They get kicked out of whatever it is, whatever situation that they that they weasel themselves into, and then a month, two months, maybe, and sometimes it's even as little as a couple of weeks. They're like, "I'm sorry." They'll admit to some wrongdoing, but they won't take full ownership of the situation. Yeah. And they'll somehow make it seem like it's your fault that things went south, and that you're willing to give it another shot if they are. And it's like the best one was Christopher Titus, where. Uh, he always had like toxic relationships and everything, or <laughs> shit hoses. Oh, you talking and like his his? Yeah, that bitch was a frame off restoration from the floor up. <laughs> <laughs> now it, it it was even funnier with the whole. Uh, just remember when your opponent got me, you have three fingers pointing at you. So that's why I knife hand, because the problem it's all you motherfucker. That's why I just use a quote, form rag, man. <laughs> wow. I go, I go right straight to eleven. Yeah, they didn't come off Papa, Papa Sierra at all. I'm just saying, Papa, 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 Papa Sierra. For those of you who do not know the NATO phonetic alphabet, is PNS, which is the abbreviation for psychos and sociopaths. See what I did there? <laughs> Anyways, we're moving on. So yeah, let's wrap this up. Yeah. Um, bottom line. You know, find yourself a resource, uh, a go-to person that you can absolutely depend on. And if anything else, send, shoot us a message uh, through our Facebook page, and we'll try to get you connected with the right resources, with the right people. Uh, you know, we'll you know, and if you're here local, I mean, we'll we'll, we'll we're we're not above sitting down with you over a cup of coffee and just let letting letting you vent. I mean, we sit on this show and we shoot the shit. Yeah, we had last episode with Mark, uh, Mark Kurtz. That's what we were talking about. Yeah, it's like, you know, we, we we shoot the shit and we give each other hell and we spend more time laughing and getting off topic than we do actually talking about the actual subject matter that we're shooting for. I think 20 minutes was actually the to- uh, the topic that we were actually getting into and then we just went off the rails. With yeah, because I think we're probably looking at like an hour right now. But... Yeah. but Bottom line is, is that everybody is responsible for their own personal safety, but it always helps to have an army behind you. And it does, I'm not talking about battalions or divisions. I mean, it could be as little as a fire team, five, six different people, maybe that you know, one or two people that you can absolutely depend on to answer that phone at three o'clock in the morning to say, "Hey, I'm in some shit. I need you to come help me." Find that person. And make that person your, you know, quote unquote, ride or die. Yeah. You know, but find that person, and then extend the same courtesy and be that person for them as well, because at that point it's about accountability. Because accountability just introduces itself and it just weaves itself into the DNA of that relationship. That with that ride or die, people are going to fall into traps. They're going to. They're going to. They're going to. They're going to become susceptible to, to the smooth talkers, to the people that say the right things at the right time. But look for the little signs because the people that say the right things at the right time, about half, you know, a good percentage of those people are are talking out of the other side of their mouth, and they're throwing you under the bus when they're sleeping in bed with somebody else. Those are the dangerous ones. Or trying to kill other people. Yeah, or trying to kill other people. But, I mean, it, the likelihood that we're going to run into an actual serial murderer. Yeah, it's very, very low. It's very, very that, little. The, 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 but, I even said in the beginning but, it's very low. But, but you know, regardless as to what type of abuse that it is that you're, that you're encountering, whether it's mental, verbal, emotional, or even physical, it's all domestic violence, and it's something that is punishable by law. And if the law and, and, and if the law enforcement agencies in the county that you live in are doing their fucking jobs, as opposed to you know some of these rural counties that are like the good old boys and girls club, it's not what you know, it's, it's who you know. Yeah. They're going to punish that individual, or the, you know. But you've got to have re, you got to have resources in place. 
make sure that you get that done. And, you know, past that, you know, we're here. We, we may not be able to get there at 3 o'clock in the morning. But we're going to do everything that we can to help you get that set, you know, to help you get that infrastructure set up. And I hate ending a show on a somber note, but I think we really need to do that on this one just to kind of drive that point home. Exactly. But, um, you know, um, again, uh, if, if you're on YouTube, give us, a, give us a subscribe, like the video, leave us some comments, get involved. Um, uh, we're on Spotify. We're also on Apple Podcasts. Leave a review. Even if it's a shit review, um, <laughs> right now I think we're up to two reviews. Uh, we had we had one review where we talked uh, where, where somebody had talked about uh, how they hardly stay on topic. Um, something about a short guy, and then the other guy with his beard being on point. His his takes are, are, are pretty fire. Yeah, I wonder who wrote that one. You little shit bag. Shit bag. Really? No. Shit hose. Sorry. Shit hose. Okay. Shit hose. If you're gonna do it. Do it right. Yeah. But. Uh, Anyways, in all seriousness, um, engage engage us on our different platforms, uh, or or just one. I mean, yeah, you can or get us on one. Instagram. You can get us on Facebook. Yeah. You can get us on uh, Twitter. Twitter. Yeah, I keep um, on forgetting that one. Yeah, so you can get us on Patreon. Yeah, look for the links in our bio, and um, I still haven't done the uh, the Patreon. update the bio. Yeah, okay. So, but we're 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 branching out. We're trying to make ourselves more accessible, but. Uh, be careful, everybody. And until yep. next time, I'm Johnny Skelton. I'm David Dickerman. And we'll see you all next time. Later.